select all instances is a uh, useful tool. I'm looking at my framing here. And I can see, aside from the fact that I just noticed that my floor joists don't go to the bond, and that could be one of two reasons uh, that I located the floor joists incorrectly to begin with, or somehow during the process, I've moved my exterior stacked wall out. And I'll have to investigate that a little bit later. But anyway, I'm looking at my Simpson joist angle and everything's good over there, but over here, it's not the case. You can see that they no longer line up. So I wanna, uh, instead of going and selecting each one, and see, the first thing that happens is I didn't select what I wanted. So now I have to start over again, escape, escape. And I might get three or four of those and then grab the wrong thing. So the easier way to do it is to use select all instances. So if I right click and I say, select all instances visible in the view, one would hope that this is the view. But unfortunately, Revit defines the view as the objects that are inside of the crop region. So if we come over here, it's also selected these. And if I come to the back of the house, it's also selected those. So I don't wanna do that. So the way to use select all uh, visible and view is to make the view only contain the objects that you really want Revit to select. So now if we zoom in and take a look at that, well, I still have that over there, so I don't want that guy. Yeah, I think we're okay, unless there's one here. Yeah, what's that? That's a beam below. Okay, so now I can just say, right click, select all instances visible in view, and the only ones that it's going to select are those objects. This is a wider, too wide, so let's, uh, move them. Or maybe, let's see what happens if we make this bigger. Yeah, stop selecting those. Okay, so that's not going to be able to illustrate my point other than this way. So I'm just going to select that, right click, select all instance visible in view. Now, it's not this view, it's inside of the crop region. And I just want to move them from the midpoint of my Simpson joist hanger to the midpoint up here. This guy, I'll just move in individually. Move him. Sure, the midpoint is. Let's hope it's right there. That's pretty good. All right. Now, if it only selected those that are inside of the view as I suspected and want, then these over here will still be lined up. Yep, they didn't get moved. Okay, so I think I'm in pretty good shape now. Uh, so let's fix that while I'm doing the demonstration here. We have a couple, this is a short tutorial anyway. So I wanna grab that and just move it to where I think it should be, although I might be better off moving the house back that way. I don't know which I, if I've accidentally moved this stacked wall or not, it's possible. So anyway, but I'm going to assume that it isn't. So there we go. I've grabbed my structural system. I'm going to say edit the boundary. The magenta line comes up and all I have to do now is line it with the object that I want it aligned with, which is right here. So that's where I want my That's exactly where I want my structure to be. My floor joints to go to that point. So this is not a good demonstration unless for some reason this is, well, let's take a quick look at that. When, um, getting way off topic here. But anyway, when I'm doing my construction documents, when I'm doing my working model, before I go to construction documents, I only use two sections, uh, horizontal and vertical. And so generally I'll have that uh, WT, so I'll toggle those windows and 
Right, let's just go over here and have a look. What is going on here? Oh, there's my bond. That's what's going on. Let's go back to here. No, that's not true. There's my bond. Okay, so now I want to go right through the section, right through the floor joist, just to see what, what's going on. This is my rim joist or my bond, and this is my framing system, which goes all the way. I'm hitting the tab to try to select that guy. So it looks to me in this view that this floor joist is only going to here, but my system, the magenta line goes all the way to there. So if we put a call out around here, and this call out is section 11 call out two. One of my new dimensionals. And right click over here and say orient to view. It's a section, section 11, call out two. So orient to that. And the best thing that I can't see it now. Because it should orient, right click, orient to view, section 11, call out two. There it is. All right. I couldn't see it before, but let's take a look now. Make it a little clearer with uh, consistent colors. There's the bond. That's the wall above. I can hide that element and that's the plywood, so we can hide that element. Sure enough, yeah. in my structural system, my floor joist is not going all the way up to rim joints here. Although when we look at the system, the magenta line is all the way to here. So it might be an offset. Anyway, so I showed a couple of things here. I like to show the mistakes as well, as we all make them. Uh, and what the resolution is. And this one I'm not going to be able to show the resolution. But uh, let's see. All right, so I paused the recording. I wasn't able to figure out why these floor joists aren't extending all the way to this bond, but this is a quick rendering just to show over here, you can see that they weren't lined up. And over here, you can see that they are lined up. It's an issue. And uh, so I paused it and I thought maybe there's an offset setting in my structural system. So anyway, that's uh, something I'll have to try to figure out. And if the point that I was trying to show in the demonstration there was really just to select uh, all instances, you have to make sure that the, that when Revit says all instances visible in view, it means inside of your crop 